Hi, welcome to the Business of Apps App Descriptions on Google Play tutorial. In this video, we're going to be introducing you to app descriptions on Google Play. We're going to give you practical and easy to understand advice about how to improve your app descriptions on the store. And we're going to identify some key differences with descriptions in other stores and explain how best to adapt to the unique challenges of Google Play. I'm George Osborne. I'm the Chief Content Officer at the Business of Apps. And previously, I worked as Head of Editorial Content for MagicSolver.com for two years, helping the company launch dozens of apps on the global stage, before I took on a freelance role in which I now work for a number of companies, including Pocket Gamer Biz as their events editor. I run my own mobile-focused blog and mobilemavericks.eu, and I work for a number of clients assisting their mobile marketing and content marketing efforts. But when it comes to App Store descriptions, one of the things that's really going to reassure you about writing a great description for Google Play is how similar it is to writing a great description for the App Store. So even though you're going to be doing something slightly different and you're going to have to make a few minor changes, the main principles that are basically in place for every single store apply on Google Play. So you want to make sure you master the first line to get a really make a really good impression. You want to make sure you keep a friendly and branded tone so that people feel like they're actually getting closely involved with what you're doing. And you want to make sure that you inform so people know exactly what your app is about. But you know, when it comes to Google Play, the big difference and the difference that we'll talk about a bit more at the end is the fact that App Store optimization and SEO plays more of a part within the app store description. So there is a limited character count, but it's quite an extended character count of about 4,000 characters. But beyond that, there's actually the opportunity to insert things like backlinks into the description. And it's going to be that that we'll focus on at the end. But before we get there, we're just going to run through the general tips for producing that great app store description that you may have seen before in one of our previous videos, or that you may just want to have a quick refresher of quite right now. So first up, you need to make sure that you master the first line for impact. Now, there's two reasons you want to do that. Number one, people who are reading app store descriptions are likely to be consumers who aren't too certain about whether they want your app or not. They want it enough that they'll consider reading the app store description, but they're uncertain about it to the point that your app icon, app name, screenshots, and potentially app video haven't convinced them doing so. So you wanna make sure that that first line really makes a good impression to try and keep those perhaps quite uncertain consumers from getting spooked. But beyond that, the other reason why the first line is particularly important is that when it comes to the actual marketing of an app within the store, it's very common for the store to truncate everything below that first line. So you need that to be making a really good impression because if you don't, people aren't likely to click below and carry on reading. And if it's not a particularly first good line, people might just not even go and read the rest of the description at all. So what is a good first line? Well, I think we found three little examples here. And basically where we've picked them from is at the point in which they truncate on some on a store like Google Play. So when it comes to Candy Crush Saga, this is perhaps my favorite of the lines. Switch and match your way through hundreds of levels in this delicious puzzle adventure. Isn't it the sweetest game ever? Like not only does it explain what the game is about, not only does it detail the fact that it has hundreds of levels, it just keeps this sort of sweet and friendly tone. It you know makes a little play on word, delicious puzzle adventure, the sweetest game ever. And it's something like that that I think really creates the sense of fun around it and is responsible for making it a great first line. Paper, on the other hand, takes an, an interesting approach that's also a slightly different tone, but I think it's really going to appeal to the people who are considering downloading it. So paper they're not going in describing what the app does. They're saying paper is where ideas begin. Like that's a really interesting concept. It's a really interesting way of phrasing what your app is about. And then explaining how it works, you know, that you can capture ideas, you know, by basically sketching on the pad itself. It very clearly explains what it does, but it explains it in a way that I think appeals more to artistically minded people. And then lastly, you've got Facebook. It's not the greatest one on here, but it really explains the advantages of actually basically making sure that you've got the Facebook app. So everyone's gonna know what Facebook is. So they don't have to go through that process of potentially explaining what it's about. But what they do need to do is sell the benefits of using it versus say using the mobile website or versus the benefit of just going online. So what they say is keeping up with friends is faster than ever. See what friends are up to, share updates, photos, and videos. It's pretty basic and there's no way around denying that it's basic, but it's effective. It tells people what the app does and how you know it's more useful sort of in a certain context. So the fact that it's faster than ever shows you the real benefit to it. So for each of these three apps, they've really made sure that, that first line counts. 
But then beyond that, we're looking at sort of keeping a friendly, potentially branded tone. So I've pulled out both Candy Crush and Paper to carry on with this comparison because they both, as I mentioned in the last section, have this interesting tone about them. So Candy Crush Saga is very much aiming more for that casual consumer market. It's aiming for people who would maybe just pick up a game based on what they see at the top of the app store. And so the fact that they've using stuff like Join Tiffy and Mr. Toffee in their epic adventure for a world full of candy, you know, it, it's very simple, but it, it does give you that sense of sort of fun, of whimsy. It's that, it's that whimsical sense that you're going off on this kind of epic adventure, the deliciously sweet saga. It, it's just basically a very, very simple and effective way of making sure that people feel that they're coming into this game that really lives up to the name Candy Crush Saga. Whereas Paper, as I mentioned previously as well, it's all about building that experience. Instead of it being that kind of friendly, invitational tone in which people are trying to convince you that it sort of fits in with that fun description that people have gone for, paper is about building up that experience. You know, it's designed from the ground up for touch, no fussy buttons or other distractions. Paper works the way you think, like a familiar notebook or journal. It's trying to appeal to people who might not necessarily think that technology is the solution to their creative problems, but it's still trying to couch it within the terms that those people would feel comfortable in. And by doing so, and by taking that tone into the App Store description, I think it really effectively explains what the paper experience is about. And then lastly, once you've managed to do that, you need to make sure that you write to inform your readers. So I've picked out Candy Crush Saga and now I've gone and added Evernote into this because there's two different elements to this that you've got to do. The first is you've got to inform your readers about what actually is contained in the app. And the top tip is to basically use bullet points as a quick and simple way of doing that. But basically Candy Crush Saga, they put the fact that it's got tasty graphics, it's easy and fun to play, hundreds of levels, leaderboards and items to unlock. I mean, it, it's very rudimentary but you know by keeping in with that kind of friendly tone that I've mentioned it explains very clearly what the game is about. Evernote on the other hand does something else that App Store descriptions increasingly need to do from a legal perspective which is actually explain certain things such as pricing options, legal things uh, you know such as the fact that it contains in-app purchases and so here it really quickly explains the way that the pricing works so it's free to download and use but if you get Evernote Premium which are for a variety of costs either monthly or annually then basically you can take full advantage of the remainder of the services and it's basically that kind of thing it's informative and okay it's perhaps a little bit dry, but actually all of these descriptions will now need these things with increased regulation and with the Google Play Store now forcing developers who use in-app purchases to basically list the pricing range of their in-app purchases as the price of the app. Things like this are an important way of making sure that even if you're keeping a fun and entertaining app store description, that these kind of cover you. They provide that legal coverage, they provide the base to make sure that people know that you're informing consumers about what you might be getting into. And so these general tips about making sure that first line really shines, keeping a really good branded tone, and making sure that you're actually informing users about what they're downloading are all the basis for a great app store description. But when it comes to Google Play, there's three extra things that you really need to consider. And in particular, they're all related to the fact that there's app store optimization opportunities because I think it's Google's background as a search engine that I think they've understood and appreciated that having the opportunity to use the app store description as a way of increasing your visibility is a smart way of going about things. So what you've got to remember within this is that number one, keywords matter in these descriptions because there isn't a keyword field on Google Play. You've got to make sure that you sprinkle things throughout. Now we've got other videos on the business of apps which explain how best to go about doing keywords, but just remember the sort of the major principles for app store for just search engine optimization and transfer some of them across. So you want the main keyword to be in the title, you want it to be in the first line, you want it to be sprinkled around in sort of a percentage of about two to five percent of the text. And then beyond that you want to maybe have sort of about one percent to two percent for other potential keywords that you want people searching. So you need to take that in mind and basically keep that when you're going forwards. The second thing you need to do is you need to basically add backlinks into the app. So you need to make sure that you're linking to Twitter, that you're linking to Facebook, and that perhaps you're linking to further things like the company website and other apps. And the reason why is that basically, you've just got to make sure that they're in there because a full HTTP or a full HTTPS link does get hyperlinked. So you can send traffic from your Google Play description directly to another app 
to another window, to another website, without them having to copy and paste and put it in the search bar. So that's very handy. And then just in general, as I mentioned as number one, just applying SEO lessons to your description is really important. So, you know, keeping that keyword sprinkled, but making sure you don't go over the top with them, making sure that your app description is informative and that it really serves the purpose. And remember just that as well as being basically available within the actual Google Play store itself on mobile, Google Play and Android are much more friendly to the idea of basically providing app store descriptions and apps from the web so people can just download them much more easily by purchasing online. So remember that there's that opportunity as well that a good app store description won't just help you get elevated in the app store optimization rankings, it will get you elevated in the web page rankings as well. And so that's really it for this video about Google Play app store descriptions. If you want to make sure that you're keeping up with everything that's going on in the world of the business of apps, or you want to make sure that you're there when basically these great new videos keep getting added to the site, make sure that you like this video to show how much you appreciate it. Leave us a comment if you want to ask us a question or want to just basically leave your thoughts on the video. And remember to subscribe as well, because that way when new videos come, you'll be one of the first to see them. That's it for now. I'll see you later.